your storm station forecast with Chief Meteorologist Josh Eaches. Well, we have a cold front moving through the area as we speak. We're starting to see a drop in temperatures and humidity across Louisiana and Mississippi. And a period of below average temperatures is anticipated essentially through this work week. If there's a drawback to the lower humidity, it's actually been 16 days since we've had measurable rain in most of the viewing area. And with those drier conditions and an increased wind field, thanks to Hurricane Ian being in the region, conditions for fire to spread will be favorable. You've got that crisp ground condition as well as those increased breezes, one spark, and there's a problem on your hands. So uh, advise not to burn over the next couple of days while we enjoy the otherwise pleasant weather out there and keep our friends to the southeast and our thoughts as Hurricane Ian's bearing down on Florida. We will notice the increased winds here and certainly offshore activity going to have some pretty significant swells out in the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane Ian is undergoing a period of RI rapid intensification. We noted this in storms in the past like Ida and these are systems that can see their wind fields increase or pressure decrease and wind fields increase by a matter of about 60 miles per hour in a 24 hour period. That appears to be happening here as Ian is moving to the north northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. There's the bigger picture already. Some of the outermost bands bringing some showers and thunderstorms to South Florida beginning their deluge and we will see perhaps some really really substantial surge impacts on the west coast of Florida. It's been a long time since they've dealt with surge like issues and Tampa in particular is really vulnerable in this case as Ian is expected to slow down a little bit on approach to the United States. Even if that category is dropping, we, as we always say, we don't focus on the category, but a long lasting strong storm just offshore to the west of Tampa could drive water inland for hours and hours and hours in addition to the heavy rainfall creating some flooding and ongoing uh, wind for power outage. So this is going to be a significant one for the Florida Peninsula and parts of the eastern panhandle. Elsewhere out in the basin, one system keeping an eye on there that is a high chance of formation over the next few days before conditions ultimately long term become unfavorable for that little red X in the central Atlantic. Back at home, it's quiet. We're awaiting the arrival of that front. Still a hot day, 90 degrees at Metro Airport in Baton Rouge. The dew point temperature has dropped from the 70s into the 60s this afternoon. So relative humidity is coming down. That will continue with that north breeze at 10 to 15 miles per hour on the surface map. We identify that front pretty much draped over the I-10 corridor right now. We'll continue crawling into the Gulf of Mexico this evening. Satellite radar only finding a few showers and storms leading that front into the Gulf. The coastal sections now, most of that activity south of Highway 90, so not much of a population center getting any rain today. Tonight, we'll look for 60 degrees, clear, much cooler than what we felt over previous nights. Notice that wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour, maybe even gusting a little higher than that tomorrow on a breezy, much drier day. We'll actually spend a lot of the morning, early afternoon in the upper 70s for briefly notching our highs in the low to middle 80s. That red flag warning for the fire weather danger will take effect tomorrow at 9 a.m., lasting until 7 p.m. Does include our entire viewing and forecast area with the exception of St. Mary Parish, but even still, probably not a great idea to burn as we have seen a relative lack of rainfall of late and we'll keep those winds going over the next few days. Future cast shows that front continuing to sag to the south into tomorrow and we'll keep the dry conditions around for the afternoon. Not much happening in skies, not only for the middle of this upcoming week, but for the foreseeable future. Let's go to that seven day forecast. Couldn't get much easier. Seven orange circles, sunshine right on across the board through early next week. We will see a slow, slow moderation in those high temperatures from the lower 80s to the upper 80s from Thursday to Monday. But a lot of mornings in the 50s, not only chalking up our first of the fall season, but likely several in a row. Light jacket in the morning for some. Take a break here on the news at four and be right back.